Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Just Pro Wrestling News Podcast. No filler, no pop-ups. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you, supporting us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hello, my internet friends, and welcome to another edition of the Monday Mayhem Warriors. Sorgatron, this this guy barely works anymore. Uh, he is on assignment yet again this week. So you're stuck with me, Matt, your trusted host of the Just Pro Wrestling News podcast, and joining us, as he always does, from Beacon, New York, he is... The only Mayhemmer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. That is me, Matt. Um, I'm I'm trying to make sure that we are live on on the Facebooks, but you know, we're here. Uh, we're recording at the very least, so uh, this will good. get out. This will get out at some point in form or fashion, and we'll just you know we'll have Sword deal with it, make him earn his fucking paycheck. You know what I mean? I mean, it's about time he does. He doesn't. Yeah, uh, he doesn't come around anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been out there uh, hobnobbing. He's been on the road working hard, hobnobbing, rubbing elbows with uh, pro wrestling's brightest Elite. stars. There is, there is indeed. There, there, well, he met Danny Limelight. Mm-hmm. How, how how jealous are you? Of I'm very jealous. Um, but hopefully, it won't be the last time we uh, we hear from Danny Limelight and Sorgatron at the same time. So. We'll, uh, we'll hope for some good things. Um, where's Michael Sorg? Well, he is uh, he's on assignment. He's, uh, he's off making more money for this vast um, empire that we've created here, that he's created, that we are here just kind of like riding his coattails on. And uh, he's off working. Will he be back tomorrow? No. It's going to be a special edition of the Wrestling Mayhem show on Tuesday night. Maybe next Monday, maybe next Monday, you'll get your Sorgatron back. But uh, you know what? I think the the big takeaway from all of this, Mad Mike, is that uh, this is a man who's in demand, um, kind of like us. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, but, um, obviously, he's more in demand than we are. But when he's <laughs> not here to do this, we become in demand to do this. And so, uh, and it's still the Eminem boys talking about Monday right. Night Raw. Exactly. So, Mad Mike, what's on your mind here this Monday evening? There is a uh, there are plenty of things here to talk about, but um, I'd like uh, to know what's 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 rattle around in uh, in your head right now. I'm gonna say something very controversial. This was one of the most enjoyable Monday Night Raws I've seen in a very long time. Well, I mean, there was a Le- lot legitimately. Like, um, I didn't feel like I wasted my time during any of this raw for the most part um everything on the show had a purpose and i may not have liked every purpose but everything had a purpose and nothing was really filler and it's been a while since i've felt like that you know there was a report um floating around the dirt sheets dirt sheets within the last week or so that um the insane octogenarian who runs that company uh, had suddenly realized that, you know, there needed to be some purpose behind all of these matches <laughs> on Monday Night Raw. It, and I ba- basically they... like, hey, we're going to be uh, going live to people in a couple of weeks and we should probably have something set. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was here on this very same show not too long ago, Mike. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we speculated on what life would be like in WWE over the next uh, coming weeks, month and a half or so. And we speculated that this would be a, uh, a mailing it in type of company for a while. And uh, I think the past month or so proved that we were correct. Yeah. Uh, not that that was some great uh, prediction or anything like that. Uh, but perhaps they have shaken that off. Uh, they made a pair of matches already for Money in the Bank, mm-hmm. 
and they started and they're fill and they're fill and I mean we already have the money in the bank matches too and we're filling out those rather quickly as well. Yes. Um here let me run this down just because I know sometimes people like to know what happened on Raw. Uh well we have some qualifiers for the women's money in the bank ladder match mm-hmm. qualifying tonight. We have Naomi, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and Booster and, Gold. And Nikki Cross. And Booster Gold. Um We'll circle back to her in a second. <laughs> and qualifying for the men's Money in the Bank ladder match tonight is John Morrison, Ricochet, Riddle, and there will be a triple threat next week for, I guess, the last spot on the Raw side. Um, and see, that, that, that triple threat next week smells a bit rank to me. I don't think any of those three men are going to be the... Uh, the qualifier based on that backstage segment we saw. So you think that, all right, so there's supposed to be a triple threat next week mm-hmm. with Randy Orton, AJ yep. Styles, and Drew McIntyre. Yeah, the, 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 the typical last, last chance. chance, yeah. But then there was also a backstage segment with the Geeks and Sheamus, and they all um, talked about, hey, why aren't I getting a shot for the, uh, for the ladder match? And it seemed to settle on the fact that, look, if something goes – all right gender you're in mm-hmm. uh, well no g- gender is going to be considered right if D- someone remember to consider gender consider gender but only if someone is hindered yes and then uh we'll see if anybody makes it all right which one what would you like to jump into first mad mike as the women's roster turns do you want to get into Nikki Cross or do you want to get into Piper Niven? I believe you mean Dewdrop. I believe <laughs> Eva Marie means Dewdrop. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess we should start with that. I The name is stupid, but... The name is I, demeaning. I, the, name the name is, is demeaning. Yeah, but I think okay. everyone realizes that too even piper niven yeah that on gives day me one hope. realizes that this is a demeaning that gives thing. me hope right that gives me hope that they're kind of subverting expectations like the the very fact that eat well okay i say eva marie isn't in the money in the bank match yet she could be i think but, you're in the clear so um... eh, last chance there's always going to be some kind of last chance because i don't think there are enough women on SmackDown to have two tag team qualifying matches. We'll cross that bridge in a minute. Let's, yeah. let's well, we'll stay on task here. Um, Piper Niven showed up. Mm-hmm. Eva Marie introduces her as Dewdrop. But but the Piper look on was Piper's, Piper look on, was mouthing the name Piper Niven. Right. Well, she was the, mouthing the look on it, Piper's so. face was. That's the first I've heard about that. And, and then they went out to the ring and then they quickly went directly to um, tag team partners who don't get along. Mm-hmm. And do draw. I, I can't figure out. Like, I feel like canonically, I could still call her Piper Niven. I think so too. All right. So Piper. It, it, she the, referred to herself as Piper Niven, even if she was only mouthing the words. Right. So she was trying to communicate telepathically to us. Yeah. Which um, I mean that's a different match. So <laughs> anyway, uh the end of this match came and Piper hung her partner out to try mm-hmm. um against uh Alexa and Nikki. I was uh, here for it. So and no, I not against like, not against Naomi and Asuka. Oh, I'm sorry. No Naomi and Asuka. Uh and at that point I said, Well, this has escalated quickly. Mm-hmm. Um so uh, they're they're speeding along. I'm curious uh, that the pace of this is is very uh, unexpected. Yeah, um, but we'll I'm okay with do. it though. I'm okay with it. Usually, I don't like when they kind of skip the middle of storylines and just go right to the breakup. I'm okay with this one. I can live without six months of dewdrop. Yeah, like um, we, like because at the end of the day, if you're not going to give Eva Marie the title and if she's not going to really wrestle it doesn't really serve that much for a purpose. So, I mean, I'm okay with kind of skipping to the end and just making Piper like a badass in the women's division. 
Like uh, that that sounds fine to me. We'll see. Um, I mean, in ring, she's um she's off to a decent start. It seems to. I mean, if you just look at what she did last week and what she did this week, mm-hmm. um, she has not been humiliated in ring. No. No, and, um, and it's I everything say, it's everything surrounding her and all of our fears and concerns that are that are causing yeah. all of the unrest surrounding this right now. Um, I will say this: I was watching Raw with uh, the wife tonight, and as soon as Piper Niven got on screen, she's like, "Who is that?" and was immediately interested mm-hmm. because she had never seen a Piper Niven before. So immediately, like, I think for casuals, Piper brings something new and different. Yeah, especially to Raw, which needs new and different mm-hmm. for, you know, and th- I think that's why I like tonight's Raw a lot, because there were a lot of upsets. Xavier Woods was in the freaking May event in a singles match, which is amazing. Like, and a Hell in a Cell match in the May yeah, event. Yeah, in a hell of a Hell in a Cell Xavier Woods match. has that on his resume right now, and I have a feeling no one's happier about that than, than Xavier, Xavier Woods. Woods. <laughs> and he is gonna. I, I I wish we had a chance to we, we could catch up to him because I'd be like, how happy are you right now? You I have a have feeling a if hell you watch, cell match on your resume now. I have a feeling if you watch Battle of the Brands, he'll talk all about it. I'm, I think you'll hear a thing or two about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll hear a thing or two about a thing or two. Nikki Cross, <laughs> Booster Gold. You know herself. all these. You know this past few weeks getting you know, varying degrees of wins over Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. I don't think that Raw Women's title match is coming anytime soon for Nikki Cross. I don't think so either. The consolation prize is that they are right. They, they, she is now dressed in yellow and blue spandex. Uh, Someone on Twitter rightly pointed out. She looks like what? uh, Just, just uh, Woods has been in the hell in a cell before. You're right. Tag, right. team, tag team with the Usos. I didn't remember if it was Big E and Woods or Big E and Coke. I knew Big E was in the match. I forgot who else was in there with him, but it was Big E and Woods that was in the Hell in the Cell. Very good. Well, now he has two. A singles. Yeah. Well, a singles match. And he's got a singles main event on Raw under his belt, which, you know, not a lot of people have. I'm sure Xavier Woods is very pleased. I think yep. that's the, just the bottom line. Okay. Nikki Cross. In blue and yellow spandex, wearing a mask, looking like uh, someone pointed out on Twitter, looking like someone who's been living in the mansion for a while, but has mm-hmm. not yet reached official X-Man status. Trainee. Trainee. <laughs> a, step below, a step below Jubilee. And she is still uh, taking classes from Storm and trying to see if she's going to make it. Um, she's learning the ways of Kitty Pride. It, it's all great. I... Also saw a tweet from uh, Killian Dane, mm-hmm. who might be an expert on the inner workings of Nikki Cross's brain. Who you would think said so, that but this was her idea. So, oh, oh, I, I have no doubts that this was Nikki's idea. To which I say, thanks, creative, uh, for once again forcing the wrestlers to come up with their own stuff. Um, Mike, here we go. This is um this is akin to the hurricane. Mm-hmm. It's a mighty Molly kind of thing. Yep. Um, how are you feeling? I give Nikki Cross as much rope as I can possibly give her because anything that she has ever been given, she has made work. Legitimately, like anything she's ever been given, she has been captivating on screen she uses the best of her minutes and she's a goddamn delight so I, i'm with it whatever she if this is her idea if this is her vision let's do it i'm in her i i get the sense that her mindset over the past six months or so uh bulk of that of which she has not been on tv uh her mindset has probably been very similar to uh, some of the talents who have been released I lately, couldn't. like uh, Chelsea Green, like the Iconics, uh, who are just thinking, I don't care what I have to do mm-hmm. to get on TV, get me on TV, I'll make it work. Yeah, um, Th- this this is very similar to me to Billy peddling her resume. Right. 
like you can tell that was clearly something Billy was like that was that was her idea. She's like, I can do this, I can make this work. This seems like a very Nikki Cross idea to me too. DP in the chat room is already pitching the Nikki Piper tag team. Yes, and please. Uh, DP, we are we cannot get that until Piper and Eva win the women's tag team titles. We need to cross. We need to do this one step at a time. Um, I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> um, no, because all right. So here's here's what I'm seeing. Here's here's what I'm thinking. Okay. Eva Marie is looking for a protege. Clearly, this one is not working out for her. I think she's going to bring in someone else. I think it's someone that's also going to be from the UK. Someone that Piper knows very well. I see Eva Marie and Tony Storm being a thing on Raw. I oh. have no I have no knowledge of this whatsoever, but I have a feeling there's a draft coming up. Mm-hmm. There's a draft coming up at the end of August. I could see Tony Storm and Eva Marie as like partners. Well, I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I feel like this, like bringing in Piper Niven, is a setup to bring in who they're really going to pair Eva with. It, it's interesting. It, it seemed because. The fact that they're already butting heads and the fact that they're already seem like they're going to be breaking up, it seems like it's a a precursor or something else. I mean, hell, it could even be Kaylee Ray. Yeah, that too. You don't know it where very she's well going to pop be. up. Um, the interesting thing for me with Nikki was like just the immediate like collective freak out on Twitter and all your other platforms. Um, I know this is not quite what we want for her but um you know we're gonna we're gonna play the old chestnut we're gonna see how it all plays out hey you know what i want for nikki tv time that's what i want for her yeah well and she's, she's, she's getting, getting her tv time now um but this is uh this is high risk high reward uh kind of gimmick we'll see if uh she can make it work i have a feeling and- she can make it work but it's not uh it's not a title contending gimmick, but you know what? She wasn't contending for a title. Hey anyway. Matt, Matt, anything at this point is a title contending gimmick. I, I'm get in the women's division, yes. You don't have two stalwarts like uh Lashley and Roman to contend with. You know what I mean? Like you could absolutely run like Mighty Molly was champion. Yeah, but I mean, like the the top of that women's division on Raw is a is a pretty thick firewall. I mean, it, it's Charlotte, Rhea, and maybe Oscar, and there's no one else getting a sniff. Um, and you could say that's the lack of depth. Um, but uh, yeah, but Charlotte's got to get the sixteen wins eventually. You know how she does that by losing the title, right? Well, she's getting it, and who's she going to drop it to? To win her money in the bank, probably. <laughs> we'll see. That is, that is a nice way to get it off Charlotte. I'm sure Charlotte wouldn't mind either. Um, all right. Uh, one more thing on the women's division. Uh, we don't get to talk too much about Alexa bliss. Uh, but I just want to focus in on one moment during that match tonight when Alexa was using her mind control Mm -hmm. on Reginald as you do. She was instructing him to raise his hand and strike down Nia Jax, but Reginald stopped. He that's did the not power start. of love. That's my question. <laughs> did Alexa release her hold on Reggie, or did the power of love overcome the darkness of evil mind control? Mike? Um, so I, I think WWE is going to announce that Huey Lewis and the News will be playing Naya to the ring from now on. Um, but who knows? Uh, maybe... Maybe Alexa did stop short. Maybe she just assumed Reginald will follow through. I don't know. Um, I I'd like to I'd like to believe in the power of love. That's that's you know that's that's what we're here. That's what I, we're I, all I, here for. My my only hang up on this. I I do believe in the power of love. Sorg, you can clip this right here. I do believe in the power of love. 
Um, but I wonder if within the WWE universe, does the WWE believe in the power of love? <laughs> um, I don't know. They did let go of the Canellas. Yeah. I just don't that know. That was if... the greatest, greatest, greatest love I've ever known. So, you know. I believe. By the way, is it Canellas's? Is it Canelli? What's the plural of that? It's not. It's neither now. He's Mike Bennett now, so you don't have to worry about it. That's fair. Um, the um, I believe the power of love was stronger than the power of evil mind control. <laughs> but I will also point out this: Reggie stopped himself. Naya didn't. Reggie's love <laughs> is stronger than Naya's. So, well, Matt, in every relationship, there's a reacher and a settler. I think we both know this. No doubt. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, be, being reachers ourselves. <laughs> right. Uh, at um, least I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> no, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll punting the coverage, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, Tina uh, is here with the weekly reminder that Becky Lynch lurks somewhere um, <sighs> backstage. She's just back there. There's She's no just chilling. Lurking. She's just chilling. Um, I, we're not going to see point. we're not going to see Becky return until a live crowds return. Uh, there's a live crowd at Money in the Bank, Mike. So mm-hmm. But but she would have to qualify for a match. Uh, how about being a former champion who was never beaten for her title? How's that for a qualifier? Um, I think I think what we're going to see with Becky is she's going to show up on the SmackDown after Money in the Bank. And we're going to have a feud of Bianca Belair. Okay. That's that's what I think is gonna happen because what about Sasha? Why not? Do you think Sasha's gonna roll back in? Por que no las dos? Or I yeah. uh, or Sasha could very well mi- win money in the bank. You know, another stadium honestly, show, another chance for money to fly in, in the a, banks. I mean, another uh, another stadium show, another chance to fly in on a jetpack for her entrance. I mean, absolutely let's not spoil this mm-hmm. chance. You're getting a second take Especially on Especially if she gets nominated for an Emmy. If she gets an Emmy nod for The Mandalorian, I mean, you know. That's a, I, I, what, what, you know what? I don't know how, I don't know how these Emmy things work. So no, I, no I find it really. inconceivable that this could happen, but maybe it'll happen. Um, circle back quickly. Um, yep. Hell in a Cell on Sunday. Mm-hmm. The show itself. Uh-huh. Um, Sure was a show. It was a show. I am left sitting here on a Monday morning for two straight Monday mornings. One after the takeover a week ago. Mm -hmm. And then this morning Mm -hmm. after Hell in a Cell. And I'm like, I don't hate it, but I couldn't care less. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened on the show. Good matches were had. Some, I don't want to sound like I'm piling on the matches. I don't want to sound very like I'm matches. piling on the wrestlers because that's not the case. Oh I no, reckon, it's not. It's I not recognize the wrestlers that fault. they're out there working hard. And, it's not the wrestlers' fault. And, and putting on good matches, but um, I, I mean, my mentions were blowing up with people raving about uh, Owens and Zayn mm-hmm. uh, for the umpteenth time. No complaints, folks, about that. Uh, Wish but was in the style. moment, watching, I'm like, I don't, I know. I know the matches are good. I, here's a here's a here's a truth for you, Bad Mike. I can get great wrestling anywhere. That's true. I can go down to the gymnasium 15 minutes from my house next weekend or so, or in a couple weekends, I can see great wrestling mm-hmm. from my local indies. We've got three or four local indies and here in Western PA that will give you great wrestling. What's the point of it all? What's mm-hmm. the point of it all? And that's where WWE is losing losing the mark. They're not showing their work. They're not bringing I, it to the building, and it doesn't feel like it matters. I'm hoping that this Raw is kind of a turning point. Like, they realize the Thunderdome is going to be going away. We're not going to be able to control the reactions of fans anymore, for the most part. And I, th- I think we're hitting a turning point. I, th- I think we're hitting a turning point. I really do. I hope so anyway. 
I, I, li- I would like to think that. I would like to agree with you. But then my brain reminds me, this is the same company that's been shoveling us this stuff for mm-hmm. so oh, many yeah. years. There is no evidence that they will change their ways. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I fully, like, basically our relationship with, with WWE is the Eminem and Rihanna song, Love the Way You Lie. Um, sure. It, it's it's an, an abusive relationship. Well, it's not an abusive. It's an abusive relationship. Here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are a lot of wrestling fans mm-hmm. who have already emotionally broken up with WWE. Absolutely. They might still check on them. You know, yeah. you know how you yeah, kind of yeah. like, you know, you sometimes check. You know, you got you got to search. So yeah, three, Facebook, three a.m. Twitter, you, you, what's so and so up to? You check the Instagram feed. Yeah, you check the Instagram feed. You see what they're up to. That's kind of mm-hmm. what's going on when we're watching on Monday. Yeah, you know, emotionally, I'm already disconnected. Uh huh. But I'm checking in on them. One yeah. out of obligation to you, the people who listen to the Just Pro Wrestling News podcast, but also to kind of see what they're up to. And I think that's why there's a market for Just Pro Wrestling News. Why there's a market for these many podcasts that recap what happens on Raw and SmackDown. A lot of fans are still curious enough to know what they're up to. Mm -hmm. They want to have a chuckle over whatever dumb thing they're going to do. Yep. But they're not into investing that time into themselves. So this is, this is a relationship where the breakup has already happened. um, And now it's WWE trying to drag us back in. Take me back. What if I give you John Cena? Will you take me back? What if <laughs> we I got give... plenty of him tonight, didn't we? Yeah, I know. F9. What if we give you Brock Lesnar? Will you take us back? You see what this is? What if we give you Cardi B? Will you take us back? What if we give like... you The Rock? What if, and what you're if, just like, what if we bring back exactly. Wayne? You've done, this, you've done this trick before. Remember the last time we got together? You gave me back The Rock. The last time we got back together, you gave me back Edge. And what happened? We're right back where we where we started. You keep begging me to take you back, and I take you back. And then we end up right back here, and I tell you to hit the bricks. And then you come back, you bring it back. Please take me back. Matt, Matt, you're paraphrasing the song, Love the Way You Lie. Okay. <laughs> I don't know you're, the lyrics off the top of my head. You're, you're paraphrasing it, like like, without knowing it. Uh, Tina in the chat room agrees Hell in a Cell was lacking. Yeah. Bailey and Bianca was match of the night, she said. Matt, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, circling back a little bit further to last Friday on SmackDown, we got the the universal title match on free television. Okay. What do you what you, do you, you know think what? about to, that? To me, Peacock is free television at this point. Um I'm not paying for Peacock right now. I know some of you are, so, you know, it's all good. Um, I, I think they're in a tight spot. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they're stuck between Fox and NBC, and they're, do, uh, they're do, trying do you to like, keep everybody happy. Do you like the make good of giving Woods and Lashley in the, in the cell tonight? It's so weird. That had to be a make good, right? Had to be. Maybe. They're, they're I, like, hey, if Fox is getting a free Hell in a Cell match, hey, why, why we want a free them? Hell in a Cell match, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Why'd you give them that? Why can't we? Well, okay, you can have something. Here. Imagine if they put the title on the line tonight with with Woods and Lashley. I can't believe it. That would have been crazy. Here, here's something else interesting. I, everything now has to be looked at in the uh, through the prism of the live fan. Mm-hmm. They're going to do Lashley versus Kingston at Money yeah. in the Bank for the title. Remember a few weeks ago, a few maybe a month or so ago, we were saying they better put a lid on Kofi Mania too before this gets carried away. They didn't put a lid. They they forgot to put a lid on it, Mike. But you know what? Hmm. I I'm okay with Kofi Mania too. I I'm okay for it, and I'm here for it. I I, I really really am like. If they want to put the title back on Kofi, sure, by all means, let's fucking do it. Let's absolutely do it. And honestly, like, let's let's agree to let's agree 
money in the bank is probably going to be a schmoz. Probably with Woods, with MVP, with all that Mr. Gosh getting involved. Main event of SummerSlam, Kofi and Lashley again. That'll be the first time like two African American men fight for the WWE title on, on a major, major pay per view, like one of the big four. That ain't nothing to sneeze at, and Vegas will go nuts for that. I'll take it. Um, I mean, I'm here for Kofi Mania too. If Give they don't Kofi have Mania another, too. you know, if they don't have another good option for mm-hmm. Lashley, and there aren't a lot on TV right now. Um, and yeah, you I can, know what? I can ride Co- with Kingston again. Kofi's a lot easier to cash in on than Lashley is. Because let's true. put it this way: no one's cashing in on Reigns. No one's cashing in on Reigns. I but... have a scenario. <laughs> okay, I have one too. Scenario. I have one too. Our, but... our scenarios are probably exactly the same. One of those Usos is going to win that Money in the Bank briefcase. Oh, oh no, I wasn't going there. Maybe it's Jimmy. Okay. I mean, that would be kind of heavy-handed. Yeah. Maybe it's Jay. Mm-hmm. Jay's is Jay's Roman's pal. He's on his side. Well, now you've got now you got Jimmy think. going. Jimmy, come on, Jimmy. Come on. Now you got that hanging over it. Um, Not only that, you have the you talk about a sword hanging over the head of a company of a uh, main event Jay winning the uh, Universal Championship. Wow. I could be interesting. I, I, I'd like to see at least one Uso in that Money in the Bank match. My, c- intrigue. my scenario is similar, but vastly different. What if Big E wins Money in the Bank? Pretty straightforward, but I can get, I can get into that too. We go directly I, I, to the uh, SummerSlam main event if you want, but uh, I think someone else is going to be showing up for that one. Oh, no, but my scenario... Big E turns on Kofi. Kofi Mania 2 cashes in. Oh, and then he cashes in on Kofi. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, they... I don't like it, but wow, that would be something. I don't want to see the New Day like, break up. But, uh... I don't either. I don't either, but could you imagine Kofi Mania 2 happens at SummerSlam. Kofi wins again, like he breaks out of the hurt lock. He hits the trouble in paradise. Boom, boom, boom. Kofi wins it again. What Woods is crying at ringside. Big E runs out. But then we don't know. Big E has kept the money in the bank briefcase under the ring. And he takes out Woods. He cashes in. And he takes out Kofi. You know, once you have the money in the bank, you're obligated to carry it around with you everywhere anyway. So that's just what I'm, like, that's what I'm saying. Rolling like, out there. But the minute he comes out with the money in the bank. No, 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 no. Be kind of like, no, but he has it under the ring the whole night. Right. He has it under the, just in case. Right. Just in case. Like, so he, he, you know, you, you, you stash it so that when Lashley loses, he could be like, well, once you, once Kofi has beaten you up, if Kofi doesn't beat you, I'll oh. be there waiting to cash in on you. Like, and then when Kofi wins, they just cash it on Kofi. Well, it could be fun. Because, I mean, that could be fascinating. Again. But you're breaking I up don't... the new day. No. Just understand what you're doing. No. Uh-uh. You're breaking up the shield. That's what you're doing. Because Roman and Dean were still friends. That's you, Roman that's, and Dean were still three friends. man operation, man. <laughs> no, but Roman and Dean were still friends. Yes. Seth was the one who turned. Mm-hmm. He didn't break up the shield. He you did sli- break up the shield. You, you slid one piece out. The, the shield ceased to exist after because Dean and Roman were like, well, what's the point? Yeah, and but they were still and then, friends. And then, well, of course they were still friends. But that's what I'm saying. Go but they were not still be friends, and then Roman got all the yeah, got I'm, everything in the alimony. I'm telling you, I and, think uh, I don't want to see it, but man, that would be that'd be some buzz. That'd be some buzz. We'll see what they decide to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Mad Mike, did you get a chance to watch Dynamite on Friday? Oh, I tried. What happened? I tried. 
Um, turns out the the East Coast feed of dynamite. Not great, Bob. Oh, sorry. Not to hear great. That. I tried. I tried watching. I saw the MMA cage match. Oh, good. Stupid as fuck. Didn't well, like it. Okay. All right. Good. Good. That's what I wanted to talk about. Great. Okay. Glad you're feeling like talk about it. Um, I was like found that whole presentation so interesting. The presentation was great. Yeah. The presentation was great. Like they had a legit six sided ring, um, legit cage up there. That was all. That was all well and good. That was fine. Mm-hmm. Hager's not the person for that. <laughs> Uh, he's he's no. an MMA fighter, so I mean, it would he's a Bellator fighter. He he ain't a UFC fighter. Let's not That's like it. being in AAA compared to the major leagues. So, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> There's a reason those games aren't All right, are All right. you're you're upset because Wardlow lost. I understand. No, uh, I, no, I thought you're was... upset because Hager won. No, I just thought it was kind of lame. If I'm perfectly honest, how so was it lame? Because if all right, if it's an MMA cage fight, there are no like. Power bombs in <laughs> a cage fight. Well, it was not. I, I yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, um, it, I, like but I, I stick to the rules. That well, well, I mean, was it really like stated that MMA rules cage fight, or was it? Yes. Did they just said yes, MMA cage fight. No, so they, they it had said like MMA rules. The aesthetic of you know MMA around it, but I and Mike, Mike, this and is an MMA fight wrestling. with no judges is not an MMA fight. Well, you know, they make weird rules for these fights all the time now. You heard, like, the, the rules for, like, the Logan Paul and the Floyd Mayweather thing. That wasn't it's, a like, fight, Matt. rules Matt, out of their mat. Matt, what? Matt, that wasn't a fight. It was it was very close to pro wrestling, and it was uh, ensconced in bullshit, much like the MMA cage fight. But um, it, it, I that was more legit because Floyd actually knocked him out and then just held him up so he didn't fall. By accident, he bucked yeah, up by accident. I know, I know. That's what something I'm else that that happens in pro wrestling too. Um, yeah, but no, that was bullshit. <clears throat> I didn't like it. Like honestly, I'm, I'm kind of done with the inner circle and the pinnacle feud. I'm kind of done with it. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I know it's not going anywhere anytime soon. But I'm, yeah, I think I'm they gotta with. they gotta finish off some of this stuff though. Um, I I was just I found the presentation very interesting, um, because um. <clears throat> once they decide that they're going to do, once they decide to put like the MMA trappings around this fight, everyone's performance changes. Mm-hmm. You know, they no longer make their entrance as they would for a pro wrestling match. They make their entrance um, as they imagine someone would for an MMA fight. Now, for Hager, he doesn't have to imagine. He actually knows, you know, what that's yeah. like. But you see, everyone is kind of playing it a little bit, uh, just a notch lower. You know, and you go through the you're going through all these extra steps. You know, they're doing the hallway walk. You know, which they've done for maybe like once or twice other times, but that's a very MMA, you know, yeah. kind of setup. Um, they're going through the 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 deal where like the, the referee is like patting them down outside mm-hmm. the cage. They send mm-hmm. them in. They go through the deal with all the all the introductions and everything. They go through all these extra steps to make this fight feel more real and i'm sitting at home and i'm going why don't we just have do this all the time (laughs) why don't we just why isn't i'm not suggesting pro wrestling should be fake mma cage fighting but i'm saying that the lesson to be taken from this mma cage fight is all of those little things they were doing the little things they changed in the presentation the little things they did to make it feel more legitimate and more real. Those are things you could do every time with every match, no matter what company you're in. This is not a strictly an AEW thing. And so many wrestling companies, they want to skip those little steps. Matter of fact, we love this phrase. They don't want to show their work. (laughs) Show your work. Get show take the steps to drag me in make it that much more make the make the illusion that much more believable and that's that's what they went to the trouble of doing with that mma cage fight and that's the thing that i liked about it and i want to okay. know why, what we need more of that in pro wrestling we need more commitment to the illusion 
more groundwork, more show your work. That's that's how I felt after that. I hear what you're saying, and part of me agrees with you, but at the same time, I feel like you lose a lot of what the essence of pro wrestling is if you do that for every match. Because if you do that for like Abaddon versus Chris Statlander, it's going to look stupid. <laughs> you know what? If you, if you do it for a grudge match like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, where they just stand there and they want to like beat the shit out of each other, it's going to look awkward. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I I think there's definitely a place for that. I think maybe that could be someone's gimmick where they want like, you know, like more grounded rules, like, like a Jake Hager would be perfect to this or Wardlow, like, he, like someone who looks like they have like legitimate chops in other forms of combat sports. Like just actually Anthony Agogo, that should be the perfect person to do this. Because he should be like, hey, ref, check him. Mm-hmm. Check him, you know, make ch- pat him down, make sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you need someone with chops. Actually, no, perfect gimmick. This is what the Alpha Academy should be doing. Okay. This is what the Alpha Academy should be doing because they should be treating every, every match like it's a fight. And, like, they want everything on the up and up. And, then, of course, they cheat, obviously. But, you know, like... I don't think you can have it for everyone, though. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a little more of it every now and then, but I don't think you can have it for that, for everyone. I mean, so many companies have been like kind of buzzing around this concept, but never fully committing to it. Like in NXT, well, you had it, there, NXT, there was one time they fully committed to it. Which for company? All for, all. for all, for all. Oh well, that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> more recently, they've been kind of. They, they've been buzzing around this 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 worked you know this, 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 what, what can we call this this is this heightened reality uh kind of presentation um although in some cases maybe it's not heightened reality because raw underground was weird but it was buzzing around that same kind of concept mm-hmm. where it's like this is a different style this is a more i i don't know i don't know what you would call raw underground but i, I feel like it belongs to, in that in that context the fight pit in nxt all right. The NXT fight pit is, yeah, that's probably cool the closest concept, we're right? going to get to that concept. Yeah. Um, even the stuff where, you know, in, in Ring of Honor, they're doing the uh, the pure rules um, matches now, which mm-hmm. are which are really interesting. It gives these guys and, and, the, to... and in UK the British rounds matches. Right, and, and I was just about to mention that too, the Heritage Cup matches yeah. in NXT UK, where they give the wrestlers. More tools to work with, more ways to tell the story, more ways to show their work. Man, mm-hmm. Mike, this, these Ring of Honor pure rules matches. Man, the, when I heard these explained to me the first time, I'm like, this is gonna suck. Well, the pure title is not new, right? No, it's not new. But I was gonna say, the pure, was, like, didn't didn't Danielson hold the pure title at one point? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, but as someone who didn't watch ROH way back in the day, I wasn't okay. exposed to that. So okay. when they're laying out all the rules for the pure rules, you're you're kind of sitting there going, okay, this is a lot. Is this going to be okay? But the wrestlers are so good at using those rules to to tell the story of the rope breaks and the closed fists, and the commentary is so good. They they they're so thorough in the way they tell the story of the match that it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just about you know giving these guys more. You know, oftentimes, you know, pro wrestling kind of runs in in the wrong direction. Whether we're like, we want exciting and chaotic, you know, you know, crazy, and there's stuff happening all the time. But the less is more works really well too. When when you when when you set up these these hard and fast rules and you make them adhere to it, and you just build upon, you know, those rules to build the drama, it, it really it really works. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I think I, I want to see you know pro wrestling the industry as a whole keep trying a blood sport. I should have mentioned blood sport too. Yes, as another um 
another in that in that vein right now. I want to see them keep trying this. I want to, I want this to continue to happen. I want to see I, I want to see another attempt at the MMA cage fight in mm-hmm. AEW, even though you might want to. I want I, to see the fight pit again. You I know wanna, who I want to see I in know the MMA we're cage fight. Never getting fight. Raw Underground back, but um, Matt, but, you know who I want to see in the cage fight in AEW. Give me Miro. Give me Miro in that environment. L- literally make him like the main character from the movie Bloodsport. Like that, because you need for that to work, you either need two guys who are legit just going to beat the crap out of each other, which I don't think Hager and Wardlow did. Hager was very clearly blown up in that match. Or you need someone with an over the top personality to make that work. Miro can do both of those things. Like Miro in that environment, I think that would work wonders. I think that would be amazing. Having a TNT title fight in that, that would be absolutely wild. I would um I, I will nominate two women to throw okay. into the MMA cage fight. I, I already know who I would is. like to see Layla Hirsch and Tay yes. Conti. In the MMA cage fight. Okay. Yeah. All hey, right. Condi's got the uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yes, background. Absolutely. She knows what she's doing. Okay. And uh, I would not mind seeing that. I'm I'm with you on that. I think that would um, be I think that would be really interesting. Uh. So. Right. So there we go. Mike, is there anything else on your mind? The only last thing I have, I have a great MLW note for you. Uh, before oh, you head oh out of here, but uh, I'll let you go here real quick. No, 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 no. Give me the MLW because Major League Wrestling. Perhaps you haven't heard about this. Azteca Underground. They're you know, returning it's, it's to the 2300 Arena on July the 10th for Battle Riot 3. Oh. The okay. spiritual successor the spiritual successor to Aztec Warfare. 40 men. Okay. You you have you have over the top uh, eliminations by over the top rope or submissions or pinfall. It is the spiritual su- successor. I'm not going to lie. To I'm, intri- I'm intrigued. I am. I am intrigued. I'm intrigued by it. the the episode of MLW I watch. I watched did not entice me. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be blunt. The ending with Dario Cueto did, but the episode as a whole did not entice me. I I, I know. But I is- you know me. I love me, and as a, an a, a um an Aztec warfare match. Uh, so they've they've started to name some names for the Battle Riot Three. Okay. Um, our okay. friend Lee Moriarty is going to be one of the names who is oh, in this uh, thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you know, just some of the, your boy Hammer, Alex Hammerstone, and whatnot. Uh, also on this show, perhaps you've heard My about boy. this. Our boy, your boy Hammer. It, it, it's just it. Never mind. Okay. okay. All right. It's a thing. I've watched it's too much. Your boy MLW. Hammer. I, I, yeah, I got you. And now I, I know you. too okay. much. Um, that's my burden. I apologize. That's fair. Um. They just announced over the weekend that this is one of those matches where, like, I hate myself that I'm looking forward to this. Oh, but no. they're going to have Davey Richards, who is back and who has signed oh, with MLW wait, to do wait, some was matches. He, was he I don't know if he's punchy or kicky, but I think he was another. kicky. I think he was kicky. I think he's kicky. It's going to be Davey Richards one on one versus TJP. Okay. Mike, I know. We have strong feelings about one of the men in this match. Mm. I guarantee that match is going to kick ass. And I, I won't like it. I won't be happy about it. But it's going to be a great match. See, the thing, the thing I think I hate the most, well, not the most, the second thing I think I hate the most about the one person in that match is that he's a good wrestler. He's a great wrestler. Mm. And I, mm. and I, and it mm. makes, it he's makes, a good wrestler. I, my man, Mike. I. He look. I've seen TJP. <laughs> perhaps you're familiar with our Forbidden Door Crazy Wall. <laughs> TJP. <laughs> TJP gets a round. Okay. He sure does. Uh, he's doing all sorts of time. He's wrestling people of all different skill levels. He he's always always no, good. No, no, Matt. Often I have a question. Great, and it drives me nuts. Matt, I have a question. In this battle riot three. If you oh, I should me- mention this also. Um, the winner of the battle riot three gets a shot at the MLW 
heavyweight title. I would assume so. Okay. I would assume. Yeah. I mean, um, why else? Yeah, I, 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 I would assume. If it's not for the title, it's for a shot at the title. That's what that's what I assume. Um do you think there's a chance that Mario the Moth is in the match? Maybe. Because there's... I know he I know he's a free agent. Mad Mike, we're gonna do a rewatch sometime over the next couple of weeks. A battle riot one. Oh boy, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this for one of the homeworks because I really want to. I, I think we've been getting off too easy on these homework assignments for the Wrestling Mayhem show. Oh no, we're Matt, some, we're gonna put in some work. Did and, you see? Uh, did you see the homework that I found? I didn't see it. Oh, 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 oh. I right. posted it in the group. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I, well, well, no, I'm just gonna say what it is because okay. this obviously isn't going to be the homework, but everyone should watch it anyway. It's. Night from 1993, WWF Family Feud. Oh, it's in full gimmick, lovely. no doubt. Yeah, everyone is in wrestling attire. Full Tata- gear. Tatanka <laughs> is there in just his skivvies. Like, <laughs> and honestly, it's the closest thing that I am ever personally going to get to seeing a feud. Between my two favorite wrestlers of all time, the Macho Man Randy Savage and Shawn Michaels, because the Macho Man leads the forces of good. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, the Intercontinental Champion at the time, leads the forces of evil, and that's what they're referred to as. <laughs> is this uh? Is this a Ray Combs? Yes, it's a Ray. Episode? It's a Ray Combs joint. Uh, do you want to know who are on the teams, Matt? I'm, uh, let me try. Let me try. Okay. Oh, okay. You already, you already I'll, spotted I'll, I'll me. Gi- I'll you, give you, you a hint. Spotted me to Tonka. I'm gonna. E- get- each team has a manager. That's the time. Uh oh. Mike. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's the Tonka of baby face still. Yes. Uh, each okay. team. Each team has a manager on their side. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I I'll, I'll, oh, grant, I'll grant you that. That's not I'll gonna be easy then. How am I gonna figure out the manager I'll for grant the baby you faces? That. Well, um, yeah. Uh, right. is, Heenan, of... is Heenan with the uh, with the heels? No, Heenan uh, was in WCW at this point. Oh man! Uh, oh, oh man. actually, that... no, no, he wasn't. Never mind, because this is before WrestleMania nine. Oh, this is ninety three then, right? Yeah. I would say just before, is Jimmy before... Hart there? Is Jimmy Hart? Yes, Jimmy Hart is, is he on the, the baby head... face side? Heels. Oh, he's still so messed with, up. He's still with Money Inc. at this point. Hogan hasn't come back yet. Oh, if he's there, what is DiBiase and IRS on the heel team? One of them. I'm gonna guess it was just IRS. Yes, DiBiase <laughs> wouldn't slum with that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see how much of the click they get. Did they get the one, two, three kid? No. Ah, oh, did they get Diesel? Nope. Did they get Ramon? Nope. Did they get any other members of the click? Nope. Dang, gum it. Did they get Sid Vicious? No. I'm in trouble. Was the Undertaker there? No, but damn it, he should have been. <laughs> wait, was Paul? What? Paul Bear was the manager for the baby face. No, no, God, I wish. What's wrong with this place? I wish. I just booked this thing better than either. Are we well, getting him? I, no, we no, getting him? I, no. I, I will say it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good the way it is. Oh God. Um. Wait, I'm trying to think of who else we can. All right. So, so right now, wait, 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 I'm trying to think. We're, we're confirmed. You have to Shawn Michaels, Jimmy Hart, and IRS on the heels, and Macho Man and Tatanka on the baby faces. I can't believe I got that far. Is Luger there? No. Is the Bulldog? No, the Bulldog can't be there. Nope. Oh my God! Who are those? There's no baby faces. Damn. I, I will give you a hint. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for hint. some hints. This um, is before WrestleMania nine. Yes, before many Steiner Brothers. Nine. The Steiner Brothers nope. there? Damn nope. it! There is <laughs> on the face side and on the heel side, there are two people who were tag team champions together with different gimmicks. Ah, uh, I'm I'm at a loss. Um oh God. Ah oh man. What fresh hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is the wrestling game show, That's baby. Stupid. This is this would be this is like final jeopardy for the wrestling game show. I can't believe we're doing this live. I love it. 
Oh, man. Oh, God. I, I'll tell you the manager on the face side because I don't think you're going to get it because he didn't really manage a whole lot. I was thinking what? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Um, did they still have Lou Albano? Did Lou Albano show up for this? No, this is 93. All right, go ahead. Slick. Shit. The Reverend yeah. Slick. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have yeah. found my way to Yeah, that. exactly, yeah. Like, the other ones are feasible. Feasible for you to get. I will. All right. Um, let's see. Ninety three. What's, what's another hint? Um, one one on the face side, one on the heel side, are both professions. Is the Mountie there? No. Oh man, would have loved seeing the Mountie on this show. That's been great. Is the Repo Man there? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the Repo Man is there. Yes. All right, so babyface occupation. He, he he was the one who had the tag team partner on the other side. Oh my God, Crush, Kona Crush, Kona Crush, <laughs> Kona Crush, Crush baby. Bra. All right, um, Chaka Bra, baby. We got one more heel. We're almost there. Oh, one more heel, man. one more face. I'm to think. Uh, the other like face it. is the profession. I my 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 brain is like coming up with the uh, and all right, and here's another. It's hint. like inventing memories. Here's that another there. hint. Ray Combs already knew him from WrestleMania 8. <laughs> and it's an occupation? Yes. And it's a baby face? Yep. Is it beefcake? No, it can't be beefcake. No. No, because he was still playing dead. Um, mm-hmm. Is it Bob Holly? No. Is it Thurman Sparky Plug? Nope. I thought you Damn had it. for I thought you had for a hot second, but no. Is it Bob Backlund? Nope. I thought you had me at the Bob. Damn it. You have you have the first letter right. <laughs> B. Uh-huh. Do you want me to just tell you? Is, it, like, is that the smoke? Are the smoking guns there? Nope. Cowboy's not an occupation. Cowboy's not an occupation. That's unless a life, in, that's a unless lifestyle. You're in, unless you're in Dallas. <laughs> Cowboy isn't a job, it's a fashion choice. Um, <laughs> mm, I go, I'm done. I'm toast. I can't. Big boss, man. Big ah. Now, the last heel. I don't know why I didn't think boss man was around. Like WrestleMania 9, I don't think of that as boss man yeah. era. Yeah. Bege- I think he was done by the time we got to 9, because he's not on 9. No, he's not. He's not on, he's not on 9. But um, so the last heel. Wait, we got uh, Shawn Michaels. Yes, Shawn Michaels, the Jimmy Repo Hart, Man, IRS, IRS Jimmy Hart. Hart, so much brain power, and Papa Shango. Oh my God, Papa freaking Shango! The only thing he doesn't have gimmick is his face paint. Really, he doesn't, doesn't have to do the face paint. No, that's a lot of time under the lights. Hmm. Um, but, did he make uh, did he make Ray Combs throw up? I've only watched the first episode, so okay, no one spoil it for me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, no, no, but, no, no, um, no, I'm uh, gonna say this. Uh, CTE really takes a really takes a toll on these guys. <laughs> but yeah. but the back and forth between Shawn Michaels and the Macho Man is legitimately wonderful. It's right. legitimately like I watched the first episode. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna watch all five of these now because it was a whole week. They did a, a week, week with these guys, a week long. Wow, mm. wow, all right. Um, <laughs> wow, yeah, so so that's that's what I want our homework to be like to just watch all five episodes of 1993 WWF Family Feud. You know what? It, and doesn't... apparently, cameraman Rob brought to my attention that. This summer, David Arquette is leading a celebrity wrestling team on Family Feud. So, like celebrities who have wrestled? No, no. He's the celebrity. He has wrestlers on his team. Do you want to know who his who his teammates are? I I, I got I got two names already that might be along with, for the ride with them. Okay. Uh, a, an obvious choice would be RJ City. Correct. Is he bringing Dalton Castle with him? 
correct. Is Nick Gage on the opposing team? God, I wish. <laughs> um, I I don't know who the opposing team is. I, I want to make that clear. I don't know who the opposing team is. Um, I'm just going to reconfirm who one of the – I know who one of the guys – the other two people are from AEW. We got a couple guys from AEW. He has two guys from AEW. Quite the crossover. Okay, all right, all right. But um, Nick, yeah, Nick Gage. No, no. Jimmy Lloyd. No, no from, the opposing team, the GCW oh, no. team is no, coming they, in there. To they play haven't said, Joey Janela. No, I'm hoping <laughs> the opposing team is Kevin Smith's podcast team. That's who I'm hoping it is because that'll just be a lovely crossover for Mad Mike. But um, so do you want to take a guess who the AEW stars are? Who have a connection to uh, David Arquette? Yep. I'm pretty sure you can guess one. Is, is Cody is Cody one of them? I don't think yeah. Cody would miss a chance to be yeah. on TV. If, if you've seen if you've if he, seen if the David Arquette off, documentary, I haven't seen off. it yet. So. Oh, okay. Because uh, because they both make an appearance in the David Arquette documentary. All right, you're gonna have to spill the beans. Everyone's uh, yelling one, at their radios. One is pretty Peter Avalon. Oh my God! Because Peter Avalon helped to train David Arquette. Okay. The other one. Jungle Boy. That's nice. Yeah. Nice get. Yep. That was like the deal they made with them. They're like, oh, you want Jungle Boy? You got to take well, Peter Rabbit. No, because so. um, <laughs> uh, when David Arquette almost died in that match with Nick Gage. So um, Jungle Boy was there? Jungle Boy was there because David Arquette and Luke Perry are really good friends. Okay. Luke Perry was a lot. Luke Perry was the one that drove him to the hospital. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, watch that documentary. I got to watch this chance. documentary. It's very good. All right. It's very, very good. But, um, yeah, so I'm <laughs> – so that was that was your uh, hot takes on Family Feud in the world of professional wrestling. I mean, um, if there was ever a game show made for pro wrestlers to just show up on it, mm-hmm. I mean, I it's also, Family Feud. I also saw in my, in my deep diving of this that there's also WCW Family Feud episodes. <gasps> What yeah, year? So, I I think. Uh, all right, oh, this is gone, 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 gone. Next week, we'll uh, all I see is high wrestler on Family Feud highlights one, and I see Ray Combs standing next to Sid Justice or Sid wow. Vicious, and it. Looks they gotta have. They have got to have gotten Sting for that. There's, there's just no. I would assume so. Done it without. Oh, him. oh my God! Give it up, Matt. Give it up, Matt. There's a Steve Harvey. Family Feud with, and I I remember this. I never watched it. TNA. <laughs> we TNA got this is take. I believe it was TNA wrestlers for TNA knockouts. Oh my god, this is not, this is gonna require a deeper dive. I, I we're over our time, uh, hold but on. I, I we see. we must discuss the history of pro wrestlers on Family Feud in greater detail <sighs> at a later time. But this has been delightful. Mad Mike, oh my you God. and I have Family done Feud this Battle podcast. of the Sexes Wrestling Edition. <laughs> With the TNA talents. Sting, I love is, it. Sting is, no, no. That was, that was, this was WCW. Oh. Sting is there. More are coming. No. <laughs> Hold on. I, I just need to see who these teams are because I need to see this. All right, Ma- Mike, on. we've got to go. But I just want to congratulate you. We've done this just the two of us, two straight Monday nights. Yes. And we're still getting along great. So kudos to us. Oh. Uh, peace in our time. Folks, oh, hold on. I just want, before we go, if, 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 if you like to keep up on what's Matt. happening around the world Look of wrestling. Look at this. Look oh, at the, my goodness. Look at those beefcakes. Uh-oh. Jim Ross. Is that an Armstrong in the that's, back? I, I believe so. I believe that's Brad It's got to be Brad. Jim Ross is there. Sting is there. Ricky Steamboat. I think no, it's, that's not that, Ricky. Steamboat. That's Jim Powers. I think that's Jim Powers. That Eric Watts. <laughs> Probably Eric Watts. Well, that's definitely filming in the back there. And on the women's, oh boy, oh it's Glow. Oh, oh Matt, it's Glow. Oh, it's Glow versus WCW. Holy oh. shit! <laughs> what year? What year are we in? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't even say. Doesn't even say what year. I would assume somewhere in the early nineties. Oh, that that was that was lovely. I in my in my dreams, 
that episode was going to be part of the unfilmed season of Glow that they never did to the kids <laughs> of the show. They hey, make Liberty maybe Bell for the movie. Maybe go for on the movie. to uh, Family Feud. Um, oh hey, um, if you like to keep up on what's happening in the world of pro wrestling, just pro wrestling news, check it out every day. Five minutes or less to get you caught up on what's happening around the world of pro wrestling. Tuesday night, a special edition of the Wrestling Mayhem show uh, with a special theme. Hopefully everyone will enjoy it. And Mad Mike, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machines, and uh, I I I'm going to be posting a lot of Lego pictures soon because uh, I don't I don't want to you know I I want to get Sorg's reaction when I display you know have my my latest Lego reveal, but I've had a lot of fun with Lego recently, so it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, um, thank you everybody for uh, for checking out and uh, for joining us tonight. Everyone in the chat, thank you for for coming on. And uh, I just like to, if any wrestling promoters are watching right now, um, book more tag team matches. Let's just get that out of the way. Just flatly, you know, that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, like I said, Wrestling Mayhem Show, a special edition coming your way Tuesday night, and we are back here next Monday for another episode of the Monday Mayhem Warriors. So until we see you again, stay May heavy. No, 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 no. And that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not my, Oh, I used my old sign off. That's, that's not what we do. That, that's, okay, yeah. this isn't the hot, 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 hot. This is the, it's not the hot. Slightly less hot. We're, 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 we're lukewarm. We're lukewarm. We're fine. Okay. Are you ready with your part? Yeah. I'm ready with my part. Okay. Yeah. I'll get it right this time. Thank you for watching. Mayhem out. Stay tuned for, for Pack Blue. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.